Welcome to our video, how to do value stream mapping. The problem we have is that work is invisible. We cannot see how work and value flows from idea to realization. But it often feels like we could go faster and people are often being asked to go faster. The solution is to use value stream mapping. This enables us to visually collaborate on the steps that it takes to do work. It accelerates cycle time, which leads to customer delight. Let's start with a blank page. The first thing you need to do is identify your value stream. A value stream is anything that delivers a product or a service. Once you've identified your value stream, you need to bring together the people that are involved with that value stream. This could be business analysts, business stakeholders, architects, developers and engineers, testers, IT operations people, security people at the support desk, anybody that has a role in a step in the value stream, in the work it takes to get that value delivered to your customer. Let's think about where the work starts. It starts with an idea. The first thing you need to do is get together in a space, your team, and you might want to do some work about scoping what you're going to do in your value stream mapping exercise. You might want to build a charter together and agree if there is anything that is out of scope for discussion. But then you're going to start identifying what the steps are in your value stream. You can do this using a board, and that board could be physical or it could be virtual, and we need some kind of post-it note. So our discussion leads to our first step being identified as our business requirement. You'll find that you'll have lots of discussion as a team about what constitutes a step. And this is why it's important to use post-it notes, because you'll want to move them around. You might find you've got parallel steps. But as a team, you discuss and visually collaborate on what the steps are in your value stream what the steps are that it takes for you to deliver your work to the customer. And you start seeing how these steps fit together. So here you can see in this example value stream, our mobile app value stream, we have a number of steps now. We have our business requirement that leads to a stakeholder meeting, that leads to the delivery of a requirements document, leads to an analysis phase, the development phase, the test phase, and finally release and the value is received by our customer. The next thing to do is identify the touch time for all of these steps in your value stream. The touch time is the elapsed time the work is actually happening. At this point, you're not thinking about how many people are involved or how much time of individuals is involved. It's the elapsed time from start to finish of that step. Together, as a team, you work to identify how much time is spent on each of these steps. Again, you might have quite a lot of discussion around this, and this is where the collaboration part is so important. You are going to learn so much about how each other's work happens, what pressures you're under, what constraints you meet, uh, and how you rely on each other to get the work through your value stream. It's recommended that you pick one time unit at this point and stick to it. It's going to make your life a lot easier in the coming steps. So here in this example, we've chosen days. Once you've done this piece, you can start thinking about your wait time. This is the amount of time that is spent waiting between the steps. So the time is idle. Uh, you're handing off probably from one team to another. Again, the team visually collaborates and discusses how much time is spent. Again, we're using a single unit of work in this time. This example, we're working again with days. And you can see we've drawn a line here to show where the touch time is and where the wait time is. So now we have both our touch time and our wait time, we can start doing some calculations about our cycle time. So the first thing we need to do is total our touch time. That now in this example is 106 days. Then we're going to total our wait time. In this time, this is 83 days. And then we will total our cycle time. And this is 189 days in this example. So that's 189 days. It takes us from having an idea to delivering the value of that idea to our customer. And it's that cycle time that we're looking to reduce. Let's start thinking by value adding steps. So in this example, we're saying that a value adding step is development. A value adding step is any step where value is being created for the customer. This will drive a lot of discussion in your team about which steps can be removed in your future state map. In this example, we're saying that perhaps analysis isn't a hugely valuable step for the customer, but you might want to have more discussion, for example, around testing. Whilst testing doesn't create new value for the customer, it's essential for meeting our quality goals. Once we've done this piece, we can start thinking about the amount of time that is spent on each step. This is where we'll identify the teams and individuals that are involved, the amount of people that are involved, and the percentage of rework that happens. Rework is whenever 
work goes downstream and has to come back upstream for us because there has been a mistake with it or it's not complete. You can also use the metric complete and accurate here, which is a mirror metric for rework. That is, if you've got 80% rework, that means the work was 20% complete and accurate. Using these metrics allows you to add value to the work that you're doing. You can assign costs to it and get a view of how many people are involved in your value stream. And this again gives you opportunities to improve. Once you've completed this, you have your current value stream map. And the next step is for you to do it again from scratch. But this time, imagine what the future could look like. Imagine how you can make improvements to the work that you do. How could you remove non value adding activities? How could you remove wait time between stages in the value stream? So we've got our cycle time and you'll probably want to have a conversation in the team about what cycle time means and what lead time is. And there are different definitions depending on whether you look to the lean canon of work or whether you look to metrics from research analysts like DevOps Research and Assessment Dora, who define lead time as the time from code committed to production. Here, we also have an example of lead time where we're measuring it from the work item approval stage to the work item delivered, and we're measuring cycle time from the work item started to the work item delivered. So once you've completed your current state value stream map and you have created your future state or target state value stream map, you'll discover that you've learned how to reduce your cycle time by a significant amount. It's not unusual to see savings of 30 to 60% in cycle time. In addition, because you've been visually collaborating with your team, you're going to learn so much about each other's work and how to interact with each other better. And you're going to be excited about taking that learning forward. So now is the time to set up experiments to try and remove those constraints, those handoffs and those delays that you've seen. And it's essential that you see this as a continuous activity. Um, you must ensure that you measure improvements and progress as you go forward and you regularly inspect and adapt. This is where you might want to start using value stream management tooling. This will allow you to automate the collection of the metrics in your value stream map. It will allow you to easily use those metrics in sprint planning and sprint reviews and sprint retrospective to see how you're performing against your goals with your cycle times and your lead times. So to find out more about value stream mapping and management, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out our blog.